Hello friends and welcome to today's tutorial. Today's video is going to be showing you how to paint this beautiful pair of sand hill cranes in watercolour. I'm starting with a simple pencil outline. I've just done the two cranes on my paper here, uh, which I've taped onto a watercolour board and I'm just leaving it uh, lying flat. I've put down plenty of newspaper because what we're going to do for the background today is we're going to do a really lovely, simple, sprayed background wash. So I'm starting by uh, wetting my entire paper with water using a large brush just to get that nice and damp. I'm using Saunders Waterford cotton paper today. Uh, this is hot pressed paper, so it doesn't have uh, a lot of the texture that you often get with watercolour paper. I've chosen this because it's going to make it a little easier to get some nice detail uh, on those lovely birds later on. Uh, but it also does make it a little harder um, to get a really clean background wash. Um, the paper does tend to be a bit streaky sometimes. So um, I'm going to uh, make friends with my water spray bottle today. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to get a really lovely uh, clean wash on this hot press paper. So all I'm doing first is putting some colours down on this wet paper. I've got Windsor Blue at the top, Windsor Lemon is the yellow colour and now I'm introducing some uh, burnt sienna and some Van Dyke Brown. Uh, these are just colours that I enjoy using and decided to try out today. Uh, you could use any colour really for this sort of thing. Um, what I'm going to do, I know <laughs> it looks a little messy at the moment, but what I'm about to do is take my spray bottle and tilt the board upwards and spray downwards from the top, leaning it at a slight angle so it's a uh, so the board is balancing on its corner, on the bottom right corner, uh, and really get that paint to start moving around and running down, uh, running off the board really with the water, uh, getting rid of those streaks that I've put on, but just leaving a beautiful, soft, uh, diffused wash of color. Um, I'm sorry you can't see quite all of this. My camera angle is a little awkward. <laughs> This is what you end up with. Um, you can see that I've put down some extra tissue as well as the newspaper that I've got here. It's always better to be uh, safe rather than sorry <laughs> when it comes to paint. You can see how those colours have immediately started running down and blending beautifully into each other. Um, if at this point you get a paintbrush out and start moving it around, um, you tend to end up with streaks and uh, muddy sort of marks, so do do try and resist as tempting as it is to try and blend in things like that little dark mark on the left there. Um, I'm really happy with how this looks now. Uh, and this is what it looks like dry. Literally, I did absolutely nothing to it uh, except for leaving it to dry, propped up so it was resting on that bottom right hand corner. So it dried beautifully with the directional wash going from top to bottom, left to right. And you can see I've ended up with this beautiful sort of sweep of pale blue coming down from the top. Uh, the sweep of uh, burnt sienna on that left hand side there and a little bit of yellow remaining uh, that started to make a faint sort of slightly greenish colour. But also brings that lovely lightness into this. And you can see also my uh, pencil outline for my beautiful cranes is still there, which I'm really happy about. It's one of the reasons I wanted to do a lovely pale wash was so that I could still see my pencil outline uh, and was able to fill in the birds. So I'm starting uh, with this one on the left. Um, I'm going to show you how to do him entirely and then um, I'll cut to after having done the other one because they do take a little bit of time and uh, YouTube does have some, some time constraints on videos. So what I've done here is I'm using a lovely soft 
a slightly bluish grey colour that I've mixed up using some ultramarine blue and some Van Dyke brown. Um, I'll pop my full paint and equipment list uh, below the video for anyone who's interested, but that's a lovely way of getting a really nice soft blue grey is uh, a blue and a brown colour and that lovely dark ultramarine just ends it, uh, lends it, sorry, <laughs> lends it that lovely cool uh, tint. So you can see I've started with the bird's beak just with quite a pale layer and now I'm coming in uh, at the top of the head leaving uh, space on the bird's face because they have uh, some paler markings and of course that iconic beautiful red beautiful vibrant red patch on the on the top of their little heads so I'm leaving that blank for now and I'm just beginning to work some really really uh, lovely pale grey down uh, towards the bird's body through the neck uh, trying to vary the tone a little keeping it darker around the back of the head and paler as then at the uh, the sort of s bend of the neck as it goes into the body and if it does get too dark you can always do exactly what I did there just use a little bit of tissue to very carefully pour some color out And now I'm introducing a little burnt sienna here, just very light paint. You can see both of these colours are very dilute. It's more water than paint at this rate. Uh, and I'm just beginning to bring this in and blend it in that wet area on the bird's neck. Uh, you can see where the paper is already wet. It's blending and diffusing quite beautifully into that soft grey colour. So I'm just going to work on getting that to the... Uh, to the level of colour that I want. I'm using a uh, very small brush for this initially uh, just to get that first little detail done. This is, uh, let me see, this is my Pro Art Master Stroke Series 60 miniature brush size 4 slash 0, uh, very very fine. So now I've got that delicate part done, I switch to a slightly larger brush. This is still quite small, this is a small flat brush, size zero, uh, but it just has that little bit extra coverage that just makes it easier to fill in the bulk of this bird's body. And all I'm doing to start with is putting a little bit of water down first, just to get that wet, and then I'm doing a wet on wet blending, putting down some little dots of uh, raw sienna and adding in some little dots of a darker brown. This is Van Dyke brown that I'm using. It's a lovely, uh, another lovely warm colour. So it's uh, going to blend really prettily with the burnt sienna. And all I'm doing now is just following my uh, pencil outline and beginning to work the colour down using a little bit of extra water. And now I'm just bringing in a touch of that lovely blue-grey that we mixed up earlier with the ultramarine and the Van Dyke brown and uh, start blending that in as well, putting in a few little dots here and there uh, just to uh, deepen down and cool off those lovely warm colours, giving a little bit of extra uh, texture uh, in these beautiful birds.
and now I've got that paint down I'm just going to use a little trick here to get some extra texture into the feather detail I'm using a fine table salt and just sprinkling a tiny little bit uh, onto the parts where that paint is still wet just at the top there and uh, the, uh, the feather detail and that salt is just going to sit there uh, and start to pull a little bit of extra pattern out of the uh, paint just these lovely little white salt blooms are just going to give that extra layer of detail in this lovely bird I would, I would have hesitate to call it um, a cheat but it, it almost feels like cheating because you get these lovely dappled uh, light effects with really having to put in uh, really not too much effort it's just making sure you pop the salt on uh, while the paint is still quite damp so it begins to work. You can see here I'm just putting a little darker paint along just to differentiate the uh, the curve of the bird's neck and that um, that interesting foreshortening we have of the body just due to uh, due to the way that it's standing. I'm just putting that extra little line in there just to help with the foreshortening. And a little sprinkle of salt for good measure. And now whilst I'm working on bringing a little bit of colour down into this bird's legs, you can see there that the salt is actually already beginning to work. I hope that you can <laughs> see that as well as I can. You can start to get these lovely little white speckles and patterns at the top of the bird's body there, where the salt is beginning to suck up the paint and leave those pretty little blooms behind. For the legs, I'm using uh, some pale raw sienna at the top uh, and then using my lovely grey colour again uh, where, the, uh, where the feathers end and the, uh, the sort of scaly leg begins, that long classic crane leg. And I'm just going to bring that down carefully, keeping it quite pale using a decent amount of water and uh, my fine detail brush. Uh, I'm going to switch from one to the other because this bird's legs are crossed over. I want to make sure that they uh, they cross over the right way. <laughs> and just, uh, yeah, using uh, the pale grey to start with and then going to darken it down once I've got that shape uh, put in. So now I'm starting work on the eye 
as you can see, I'm being really careful and quite slow. Uh, I'm starting with just a little circle there of the raw sienna again, lovely bright orange colour. These birds have got wonderful uh, amber coloured eyes, really rich colour. So I'm using this, um, sorry not raw sienna, burnt sienna. <laughs> I'm using the burnt sienna um, pretty much just straight from the pan there to get this lovely richness. I'm using a very delicate touch to uh, outline it as well with a little bit of the grey to just make it stand out. And I've also just popped in a tiny little semicircular pupil. I hope you can see that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have um, should have zoomed the camera in, but I was concentrating so hard I didn't really think about it. Um, so the black pupil is very small. It's uh, yeah, a little semicircle of darkness. You want to leave a tiny little spot of white uh, at the apex of the pupil as well, just to catch the light uh, and just to give it a more realistic look. Uh, and all I'm doing now is filling in that, that iconic red spot on the crane's head and I'm using light red for this. But of course you could use uh, a brighter one uh, if you wish, but I really enjoy the uh, the sort of slightly duller but still really rich tones of this uh, this lovely red. And there we are, there's our lovely pair of birds. Uh, the uh, crane on the right hand side I filled in using exactly the same techniques uh, that I just showed you for our, uh, our left crane, the crouching one. <laughs> We've got one little and one tall here. So now all I'm doing is going to put in a very simple foliage background. I'm using this lovely brush to create a little bit of foreground foliage texture. I'm just using some very, very weak burnt sienna paint to start putting in a little bit of detail. You can see on the, uh, the second crane, the tall fellow there, I've used the same uh, salt techniques on his feathers as well as some really nice simple uh, wet and wet brush strokes following the same colour palette uh, to just fill in the pencil outline and of course do his iconic little red spot on his beautiful forehead. So now I've mapped out where I want the foreground. I'm coming in with a um, slightly darker burnt sienna on this lovely texture brush and I'm just layering up uh, and just popping it over where I want a little bit of a uh, little bit of foliage, a little bit of dry brush and bracken uh, to start popping up around our beautiful birds. You don't of course have to have a a particular foliage brush for this, a, uh, a stippling brush or a fan brush or just a, a very messy brush would uh, would work just as well uh, as long as you keep a light and gentle touch with it. Uh, I'm just adding in a little extra Van Dyke brown here uh, for some dark detail as well. And now just some lovely faint and background grasses using my Pro Art Sword Liner brush to just throw in a few lovely delicate and elegant uh, grasses and reeds just to either side of the birds. Um, so you can see again I'm using a really really uh, diluted paint because these are just going to be uh, silhouettes, misty silhouettes uh, in the background really. I don't want these these ones to stand out too much so I'm using very very diluted paint they're going to dry uh, very translucent and I just want them to look like they're just popping up out of this lovely bracken in the foreground here
And there we go, just popped some more in on the other side using exactly the same technique. And now all I'm doing is just uh, going along with my uh, fan brush, dipped in some very loose paint, doing a few uh, gentle spatters to just look like some pretty seed heads, dust motes, little insects perhaps, coming off the tips of these, uh, these lovely distant grasses and reeds. And if, like me, you do end up using uh, a little bit too much paint, you just carefully use a little scrunched up piece of tissue to take out any excess water. It should stop it from running or spreading or smearing or smudging. <laughs> Hopefully. So you can see how faint and transparent these lovely grasses have dried already. So now all I'm doing is taking some bolder burnt sienna and just doing a few extra strokes and just bringing these uh, into the foreground uh, and really using that uh, deeper colour to push those outlines we did before into the background, if that made sense. <laughs> um, I really like how this looks with the uh, with the, the lovely translucent misty reeds in the background and the slightly sharper, bolder ones uh, in the foreground around the feet of our beautiful birds. Of course, you don't have to use this um, the same brush as me, a small round brush, or a delivery brush, or a ridder brush, anything like that that comes to a lovely sharp point would do just as well for something like this. And just for a finishing touch, this last little bit of spatter detail using our beloved Van brush. <laughs> using a Van Dyke brown again and some slightly richer burnt sienna. Just add a little bit of extra detail there. Just this lovely tiny, almost invisible, but still just there, little spatters of detail just coming up off these lovely grasses. I just think it adds a little bit of extra just detail and life to this painting. And here we are with the finished painting. The tape taken off, we get this lovely white border and we see our beautiful cranes framed by these pretty uh, grasses and bracken. So thank you everybody for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I really enjoyed painting it. 
Uh, so please let me know what you think in the comments. I always love hearing from you. Please leave a like as well and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Uh, if you'd like to see more like this, please also consider checking me out on Patreon where I've got some extra video tutorials, photographs, those sorts of bits and bobs for everyone. Uh, so thank you again everybody for watching this. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day wherever you are, whatever you're up to, and I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video.